Welcome back to the Retro Car Guy 530 YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss how you can use an OBD2 uh, code scanner, like this Innova 3160E, to check the readiness of your vehicle for a smog check. Here in California, you're required to perform a biannual smog inspection, and I received a notice for this particular vehicle a couple weeks ago. So we're going to go ahead and see how we can take advantage of the code scanner to see how ready this vehicle is for a smog check. So stay tuned after the intro and we'll check out how to do that. Thanks. All right, we've moved the camera down into the driver's side footwell area in this 2006 Toyota Highlander Hybrid. That's so you can see the OBD2 uh, diagnostic port connector, which is located right here. It has a unique shape to it, so the code scanner can only plug it into it in one, one orientation. This is usually located somewhere in the driver's side footwell area, and it could be oriented in a vertical uh, at an angle like this one, or on the other side, I've seen it towards the center console like in a four Thunderbird. 2004 Ford Thunderbirds over towards the center. So you, you should find it somewhere in this driver's side footwell area. So let's go ahead and what should happen is when I plug in the code scanner connector, I should get 12 volts from the vehicle supplied into the code scanner and that should initiate a power up. If you don't get the 12 volts from the vehicle, what could have happened is the fuse that's protecting the circuit may have blown. And a lot of times they'll share the power for this with a power connector or a cigarette lighter in your vehicle and you may want to check the fuse for that particular circuit to see if that's been blown by using those other types of devices the power port or cigarette lighter so let's go ahead and see what happens with this one it looks like we've got 12 volts and it's beginning its power-up sequence. It's interrogating the vehicle. So now we need to insert the ignition key into the vehicle and turn it to the on position, but not start. This is how the computers power up in the vehicle and then the code scanner can then figure out which uh, particular protocol is being used by this vehicle. And then it, it asks the computer what type of vehicle it is. And this case is identified a 2006 Toyota Highlander Hybrid. And that's what we have. So we're gonna acknowledge that. And here we go to the main screen here for the general readiness monitors and stored freeze frame data for diagnostic top trouble codes. So here we see that the uh, readiness monitors at the top of the screen here are all in a green state, which is good. And what that's indicating is those particular readiness monitors are tests that the computers perform to verify subsystems in the vehicle, to make sure that like you don't have a leak in your uh, evaporative system or things are operating within normal parameters, like catalytic converters and oxygen sensor levels and such. So all of these have performed correctly and come to a successful completion. So they're all in a green state. If they had not completed yet, not run or run to an error, they would have been flashing red with this particular unit. And then if that had been the case where they had failed, there would probably be stored freeze frame data with diagnostic trouble code stored here, which we would then be able to look at the code and figure out what subsystem is being complained about in the car. And then that would give you further information to go investigate the proper solution to correct that. So if you do have stored trouble codes, and you can use this particular device to go ahead and clear those, what that will also do is it will clear the readiness monitor status uh, such that you'll need to rerun all the tests. And I've heard of people that they'll fix something, which is great, then they'll clear the code and then drive it immediately over to the smog check station. And unfortunately that's not going to be enough time for most of those tests to run successfully. Some of the tests take several tens or hundreds of miles to run to completion. Here in California, you can have up to one readiness monitor not in a ready state. A lot of times the EVAP readiness monitor will not be ready, unlike my 2004 Chevrolet SSR. It uh, will uh, take sometimes several hundred miles before it's in that ready state. So. I have to account for that in my smog check planning, and I can have that one not in a ready state, and I've actually gone through smog checks in California with, without that one ready, but you, of course, want to try to get all of them into a ready state. 
And so if you clear any diagnostic trouble codes, those will all get reset. And like I said, it could take several tens or hundreds of miles before they're all ready. So use your code scanner again to verify that they're in a ready state. And this particular unit also has a system status and showing green on this particular vehicle, which means it thinks I'm ready to go for a smog check. If it were amber, that means some of these tests haven't run yet to completion. But if it were red, that it had detected there were some freeze frame data with diagnostic trouble codes stored. So we would have to check those out and fix them and then clear them and hopefully not reoccur. So the code scanner is helpful in identifying those situations before you go to the smoke check station and uh, hopefully it will help you figure out those things before it becomes a problem uh, at the smoke check station and you get that surprise that you didn't pass. So that's uh, how we can take advantage of the code scanner. So hopefully this video was informational for you and you can take advantage of that information before you go for your next smog check. And this is Robert at Retro Car Guy 530. Please uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll hopefully see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.